The details of animal abuse and neglect cases are often grim. Pets deprived of food and water, small cages covered in feces, dogs forced to fight each other to the death. But some of those cases never saw a courtroom because of how Indiana defines abuse and neglect. As Barbara Brozier reports, that's starting to change as the result of new laws that took effect earlier this year. The Morgan County Humane Society is bursting at the seams with adoptable animals. But it isn't all happy reunions and sending animals to loving homes for the staff that works here. The nonprofit also serves as animal control for the county, and the cases can be hard to stomach. Shooting is frequent um, of, of owned animals, and unfortunately, it is also not illegal to shoot your own animal. The Animal Legal Defense Fund ranks Indiana in the top 10 nationally for its animal protection laws, but advocates say there's still a long way to go. Animals have been typically in our state and nationally considered property. And so it is very difficult uh, when you're dealing with a living being to explain to the public that your animal really doesn't have any more rights than your handbag. That can be a real challenge when it comes to filing criminal charges for animal abuse and neglect. In some situations, prosecutors found they didn't have a case because the horrific situations they saw didn't match the state's legal definitions. So we had cases where we had large numbers of animals confined to a very small area or animals that were being kept in uninhabitable conditions and the neglect statute did not cover those situations. This Tippecanoe County Animal Advisory Board pushed lawmakers to make changes to the definitions of animal cruelty, neglect, and torture. That means they will apply to more cases. The law beginning in July of 2019 added two sections um, as part of torture, including electrocution or intentionally freezing or heating an animal to death. Another change that took effect in July means someone convicted of animal abuse cannot own, harbor, or train an animal as a condition of parole. Before, the court could decide whether to apply the ban. We had multiple cases where we had animals that were killed and we could not get a ban from having that defendant who was convicted from going back out and buying another cat or dog. Prosecutors and law enforcement say the ban is important, not just for the safety of animals, but also people. They say in many cases, animal abuse can be a warning sign for other criminal activity. Statistics show from our prosecutor that, you know, if you're going to harbor an animal again, not only will you abuse it, but you also have tendencies and statistics that show that you probably got abuse within the house too. That's illustrated in a Lafayette case from last year. Police went to this house after someone complained about possible dead animals. Court documents say the officer found a large number of rabbits inside with animal feces and trash throughout some areas of the home. Investigators also discovered something else. And when the animal control officer went in there due to the training from the animal advisory board, they saw in the in the bathroom ceiling a hidden camera. They backed out, got a search warrant with law enforcement. Lafayette police went in there, uh, recovered, and that person was convicted of uh, child exploitation, child pornography, and a criminal uh, animal abuse. A judge sentenced Anthony Leval to 10 years in prison for the crimes. Advocates hope this year's changes will make it easier to prevent people like that from owning and harming more animals. And they plan to keep taking their fight for stronger animal protections to the state house. We're definitely moving in the right direction. I think we have a lot of absolutely incredible momentum. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Barbara Brozier.